All right. Well, it's been a minute since I've had like a true hot take. I don't even know if this is that hot of a take, but a uh, hot take itch. Uh, you know, it's been a while since I've had a take that could piss off a fan base. So I guess it's it's time. I'm overdue at this point. I did not love the Brian Burns trade at the time, and the more I think about it, the more I dislike it from the Giants' perspective. Here's the thing about the Brian Burns trade. Everyone kind of immediately went into making fun of the Carolina Panthers because, yes, they you know, had an opportunity to trade two first-round picks, uh, to get two first-round picks for him. They said no. A couple years later, they're only getting a second and a fifth. At the same time, it was a different regime. Like, different, you know, guys uh, said no to that trade. Uh, so it's kind of not really the same thing. And also, that's irrelevant to this trade, right? Like, it could be possible the Rams almost made an incredibly dumb decision, and it still is the correct move now for the Panthers to trade him away, and, and that's what I think is the case. So let me just explain, uh, first off, why I think it's the case. You know, we have to go through several things for me to hopefully explain why I don't think this was the correct decision by the Giants and why I think it was the correct decision by the Panthers to move off of him. It's not because he's a bad player, but let's get into the contract, because the contract is kind of the main reason. It's how much uh, Burns is going to get paid here. These are the details where you look at it, and so the cap number is kind of the key thing to watch here. So it's going to be on average $28 million a year. So, uh, you know, only $15.5 million in 2024, but then it's going to be right around $30 million for each of the next four seasons. And while you can kind of get out of this contract after a couple years, after two years, you'd basically be looking at a, you know, $30 million cap hit. So you're, you're basically going to have him for thir- three years, almost certainly. After that, you could get rid of him for $14 million or then $7 million in dead cap, but that's still a decent amount of dead cap. So make no mistake about it. The Panthers, or excuse me, the Giants made this contract because they want him to play all five years. And hey, he's young. He'll be 30 at the end of the contract. He very well could play all five years. The length of the contract isn't really an issue to me. Like, I think he's a good player. I think he'll be good for a while. Uh, the lack of a safety valve, you know, there is a safety valve. It's not a great one, but there is one there. So so that's kind of fine. It's more so just the amount per year that Burns is getting. And we can sit here and say, ah, salary cap up. I hit my uh, microphone. Uh, We can sit here and say, oh, the salary cap does not matter. Who cares about uh, if you're overpaying uh, for for him? Because you can just move around the salary cap. Well, there still is only so much money each team is going to spend, and you're using that money on a specific player uh, who, you know, I don't think is maybe necessarily the best asset, best way to spend $30 million a year. Let me explain. So $30 million should get you one win if all is equal, right? One win for $30 million. The average team is going to spend uh, you know, $30 million on a win. The average team gets eight and a half wins. That's the way it's out. You know, if you spend uh, what the t- regular team does, that's what you should get. However, this is misleading because quarterback contracts are always better than non-quarterback contracts. There's also rookie deals in, in play. So that's not exactly fair to say because when you're signing an edge rusher, it's almost never going to get you that. Really what you kind of want to shoot for would be 50 million per win that that's kind of the actual goal for signing someone who is in free agency who you know uh is not a quarterback that's kind of the main way you should view that so really 30 million should actually get you 0.6 wins so it's not quite as dramatic as that might entail um so for Brian Burns is he a player who gets you 0.6 wins well let's look at PFF war for example let's see how they view Brian Burns if you look at his uh, your free agency page on PFF, you see his PFF war is not quite that 0.6 mark that you would want him to be. Ideally, it is actually a lot lower than that. You are looking at, uh, you know, his best season in the past three years was 0.14, which feels kind of shockingly low. I mean, edge rushers tend to not be as valuable as I think the general public believes them to be. But still, you will see some like, you know, like TJ Watt and Miles Garrett can get that war up to like one. And you will see some other like really good guys can still get it up to like, you know, 0.4. Uh, you know, that's 0.4 is like a great edge rusher season if you're not one of those like you know, absurdly elite guys. But Brian Burns has not exactly been an advanced analytics uh, darling over the years. If we go through some numbers such as like, you know, uh, so three PFF grades and then a non-PFF 
uh, stat. Uh, his running grade was 57th uh, out of eligible edge rushers, pass rush 29th. Uh, so his total grade was 39th. And then his win percentage, uh, so his pass rush win rate was 37th. So again, these aren't bad numbers. Like this is a good player, but this isn't an elite player and they're paying him elite edge rusher money. If you look at his year in and year out pro football focus stats, you see that for the you know uh, past five seasons, he's had that one 22 season, 20, uh, 2020 season, excuse me, where he was graded 13th best in uh, football. But again, the grade itself wasn't that much better than it was last year. And he's had more seasons where he hasn't even cracked a grade above 65. So Again, it's not to say Burns is a bad player. I actually would defend Burns if someone looked at this and said, oh, he's a bad player, because he's not. I think he's, uh, you know, part of it could come down to situation. When I watch him, I do think his film is better than some of these stats, you know, say. But, like, numbers are still numbers, especially for an edge rusher. It's very rare for a guy to have, you know, grades like this and numbers like this, and then all of a sudden become a consistent 15 sack guy, which is what they're paying him to be. In fact, even his like box score stats are good. Like they're good, but they're not elite. You know, uh, has gotten at least eight sacks, at least seven and a half sacks every year he's been in the league. And that's kind of the main thing you look at when you're talking about him is how consistent he has been. And he's gotten a lot of playing time. Consistently has been able to get a high number of snaps. That's very good. And does have a twelve and a half sack season on his resume. But for the most part, is kind of a fringe. 10 sack guy when he is playing, you know, over 800 snaps every uh, every year, which to me is not worth that kind of contract. And when you factor in, you're giving up a second and a fifth round pick, which, you know, it's a high second round pick as well because, you know, it's the Giants second round pick. To me, that's too much value to be giving up. And, and listen, part of the deal with something like this is that the cap continues to go up. So these contracts look better as things go along. I think there's worse ways to spend $30 million than getting a good edge rusher. Like, th there is worse ways to do it than that, even if you have to give up draft capital to do it. I just think it's an overpay, and given the fact that you're also trading for a player like this, it's not the move that I would have made. Now, a lot of Giants fans have kind of defended this move, and one of the real, real reasons they are kind of uh, in favor of this move, uh, and listen, like I said, like like Brian Burns, the player, I made a whole film study on why I think Brian Burns is good and what he will bring to the table. Like It's certainly exciting. But a lot of Giants fans, kind of another way they defended this move is they got essentially the exact same thing for Leonard Williams, a second and a fifth round pick. So they get a second and fifth, they then trade that back and get uh, what most people, including myself, perceive to be a better player uh, for, you know, uh, the same value. Well, not exactly the same value because the you know the Seahawks uh, second round pick isn't as good as the Giants second round pick. The Giants gave their own second round pick to the Panthers, so not exactly the same, but similar value. But again, that's kind of irrelevant, right? If the Seahawks gave you too much for a pl for a one year rental, like. You don't then have to spend that on a different player. Like you can just draft players if you wanted to, right? It, it it's kind of not not really relevant in my opinion. It makes the whole situation look a little better for the Giants, certainly. But the uh, the move itself is in isolation its own move. So, uh, trading for Burns and paying for him is its own move, completely independent of the Leonard Williams trade. You know, sometimes teams are more willing to spe uh, trade a pick away if they have extra picks, but having extra picks is good. Look at the Rams. They have 14 picks every year, and it's why they're able to uh, consistently have guys come out of nowhere and play well. Again, it's one of those things where I think a lot of people could sit here and say, well, uh, you know, where else are you going to get a Brian Burns? And the answer is probably not m much else. So you're probably not going to find a Brian Burns on the open market. That That's fair to say. But you have Kayvon Thibodeau. You have uh, Dexter Lawrence. You already have. And I, I get that's why the Giants are doing it, right? Like I should also mention that the Giants are trying to be great at the defensive line position, which is honestly a fine decision to make. They don't want to just be kind of okay across the board. They want to try to find an area where they can be great. And if you're an elite in one specific area, it is easier to win and steal games. So I get it. I just think if the goal is to try and eventually win a Super Bowl, I'm not sure if I'm lo in love with this move. And, and I would defend the Panthers more so by kind of saying that, hey, you know, yes, they should have gotten two first-round picks, but that's over. That, that offer isn't coming back on the table. So 
At this point, get some value. Don't double down on a, a bad decision. Find a way to move off of him. Let someone else make Burns the you know uh, second highest edge rusher in football, and you can go back to you know uh, hopefully putting that money towards offense, which they got Deontay Johnson, kind of trying to make a better situation for Bryce Young, which is what they desperately need to do. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. What do you think? I'm sure there's going to be a lot of angry Giants fans in the comments because usually uh, Giants fans are not thrilled when I critique some of the moves they make. But you know, uh, hey, I got to be honest about my opinions. Uh, it is what it is. I don't hate the Giants. Uh, I actually like the Giants, but I, you know, the, sometimes I dislike their moves. It is what it is. I dislike the Daniel Jones contract as well. I think I was proven right about that. We'll see if I'm right or wrong about it, but uh, th that's kind of my thoughts about Brian Burns, who I think should be, like, I'm, I'm expecting him to get 10 sacks next year in that defensive line as well. Should mention, once again, think he's a good player, but uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.